Uh, okay, and the recording has started. Welcome everyone to the DSC community call. Um, the last one was not even six weeks ago, it was five weeks ago because I think we were a week late or something. And um, what is the DSC community? Um, for, the, for those, it's the first time, sorry, I can't see you anymore, here we are. Uh, the DSC community call is um, organized by the community and then we have different speakers coming and sometimes it's uh, people from Microsoft doing a speech like today, but most of the time it's also the community, if they want to bring up a topic, share some things, then they just tell us and then we organize that and sometimes just like free form chat. Um, if you have open questions and things, this is the community. You can find us on the Slack or Discord in the DSC channel, so aka.ms slash PS Discord or aka.ms slash PS Slack. And uh, we obviously are on GitHub in the DSC community. You can find us there on all the repositories. And the next call is the 17th of May. First, I will go through a few intros. So there will be the PowerShell DevOps Global Summit in Redmond. Um, it's the big event in North America. And you have everyone going there. Obviously, it's very close to uh, the PowerShell team. So the PowerShell team is going to be there. I guess the machine configuration team is going to be there. Jody, you will be there. No, well, you I'm can't. Be, but I can't. But I think there there will be some representation from the team there too. So yeah. Yeah. So there will be people from the team. There will probably, I believe, yeah, there are probably going to be some other teams as well. I don't know exactly uh, who's going to be there, but I would not be surprised if the Winget team is going to make an appearance over there as well. We'll see. Um, and uh, yes, so it's a it's a big event. The keynote is going to be done by, by Brendan Burns. Um, there will be community lightning demos. There's more than 50 sessions to attend. They've got a special track, the on ramp track, which uh, I believe Jeff uh, you manage. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. So what is the on ramp track? Because I believe that's a very cool feature of the of the PowerShell DevOps Summit. Let me figure out how to. <clears throat> Sorry, I put you on the spot there. Yeah. Uh, that's the kind of thing that happens in the DSC community call. You don't uh, know that you will speak my, and here you go. Mic back on. Am I on now? There we go. Perfect. Sorry. Yeah, the on-ramp program is a kind of a conference within a conference at the PowerShell Summit. It is devoted to uh, people who are kind of new to the industry. It's meant to get them up to speed on what we do in the main event, because the main event is very deep diving for experienced people. So it's a way of on-ramping them into the industry and into our community. A lot of people who are in this program are new to IT, so there's a lot of career development and soft skills and intro to a lot of the technologies that we go into much deeper uh, detail in the main event. And so a lot of speakers who are in the main event, I've asked them to come in and uh, chat for a little bit to the audience in the on-ramp program. And they'll be there for some of the main track sessions where there's an overlap, like they'll come in and see some of the keynote and they'll partake in the social events. And it's a lot of fun. People have a good time and learn a lot. Yeah, so it, it's a great event. I was there actually last year. I probably won't be able to make it this year, unfortunately. But uh, it's the perfect opportunity to go and meet uh, the community, uh, the PowerShell team, and a lot of fun people on that phone. Obviously, there's a lot of content, but there's uh, every different levels, I would say, in PowerShell. And with the unramp, it's also for the beginners. So please share the word. Uh, tickets are on sale. Uh, probably should hurry up now because it's getting real close. And if you happen to live on the other side of the pond, we have the PowerShell Conference Europe, where Jeff is going to be speaking as an example, and, and many other people. Jody is coming, uh, and some of the people are coming as well. So um, it's uh, the other event uh, in Europe. Uh, we will be in Prague this year. It's a four-day event. Uh, I would say kind of similar format uh, than the uh, North American event, but like some, uh, we don't have an, unfortunately, we don't have an unrun un program. But this year we're starting doing a hands-on long session so people can really be hands-on with their laptops. And uh, for four days, you will be mixed with 45 speakers and we cap the attendees to 300. Uh, so like there's a big um, speaker to attendee ratio. 
which is the same in North America, to be honest. It's it's really a great event where you can spend a lot of time with the speakers over four days. And we also have uh, the PowerShell team, Sydney, and you, Stephen, coming. Uh, the machine configuration team, so Jody's there, she will be there. And Demetrius is coming from the Winget team. And uh, we also have a, we have a uh, PowerShell community dinner. It's also a social event, so it's going to be fun. Feel free to take your tickets. It will be later. We in June. I haven't put the date, June nineteenth uh, to twenty second. So now that's done. Uh, I will straight away leave uh, the scene, the stage for uh, Jody, Steve, Brandon, and Julia. We've got loads of news to share with us today, and we will have tons of questions. So Jody, if you want to take it away. Please introduce yourself. Yeah. I think that Julia is going to be actually doing an intro for the content today. So, Ju I don't know. Julia, please introduce yeah. yourself. <laughs> All right. I'm going to um, share screen first. Hey, everyone. I'm Julia. I am, um, I am a PM on Azure Automation. Ah, ah, oh my gosh. Azure Auto Manage Machine Configuration. As you can see, I am pretty new to this since I just joined six months ago. Um, all right, I will just start sharing now. Cool. So um, today we'll be going over Azure ecosystem updates, um, NX tools, and DSC v3 specifically. As Gail mentioned, we're Jody Boone, Julia Wong, Brandon Poe. Um, we're PMs on uh, auto manage machine config, and we're so happy to be joined by Steve Lee today, the engineering lead of PowerShell. All right, cool. So jumping into the agenda, we're just going to be going over machine config overview and updates today, as well as NX tools overview and demo and a DSC v3 overview and demo. And we'll be finishing off with a call for feedback as well as Q&A. And now I'll be handing it off to Jody for some machine config updates. Love it. Thanks, Julia. Awesome. So. A lot of the content that we're going to be talking today is covering auto managed machine configuration, which was previously called guest configuration. And uh, at an abundance of caution, in case no one's ever heard of it, I'm just going to go over two uh, notably marketing y slides, but we'll just give a quick overview of the service and kind of uh, give some context for the additional uh, demos and content that we're going to cover today. So, auto managed machine configuration represents the most modern platform to uh, author and configure DSC uh, at cloud scale. So through machine config, you can audit and configure OS, app, or workload level settings as code. And we have PowerShell experiences, Terraform, Portal, CLI, really whatever you want to do. But again, today the focus is really going to be on how to enable custom machine config using PowerShell at scale. So when we're looking at DSC uh, as a platform and looking at machine config as a successor to kind of AADSC and the DSC extension, uh, we knew that this was going to be the first platform to be able to support uh, configuring Linux servers uh, within Azure. And that ability went GA this past September. So we're really excited about that. Um, and through this, what we do is allow you to dynamically assign configs to both Windows and Linux servers at scale. And this could be Azure VMs or really servers that are kind of living anywhere through Arc enabled servers. So these are on prem servers, servers that are living in other clouds. Um, so you can really have kind of one consistent management experience for configuration management, um, leveraging DSC. This past September, we also had the milestone of being able to uh, remediate configuration settings at scale. Uh, this, went this went GA, uh, and this represents the continuous auditing and enforcement of configuration settings with like at scale and granular reporting. And then the kind of other chunk of our offering is breaking is broken down is being able to deploy built in content. And we'll be going over a few of the examples of like what this built in content is today. But as we're going through everything, you'll notice that this does have kind of a keen focus on uh, security and security best practices with alignment to the Azure security benchmark. The second thing that we'll be going over today is, again, how to bring your own best practice configurations uh, into Azure or anywhere else uh, through custom artifact deployment, leveraging PowerShell DSC. And like, as we mentioned, we do have a lot of different ways to interact with the platform, but we'll be focusing on PowerShell today. Cool. Thanks, Julia. Next slide. Awesome. So this slide kind of represents uh, what our PowerShell tooling looks like today and kind of our workflow uh, around deploying custom packages at scale. So through the guest configuration module, you're able to take the DSC resources that you know and love, uh, as well as your compiled configurations right now using a MOF, and you can package these into artifacts that are consumable via our agent through the new guest configuration package command line. 
And you can upload these to kind of your preferred storage environment. So this can be like Azure Blob Storage. This could be like Google Drive. This could really be anywhere that's publicly accessible via HTTPS. Um, and then through that, our commandlets also provide an experience to generate a new guest config policy, uh, which you can then kind of deploy at scale uh, through Azure and specify your auditing mode between like audit only, um, apply and monitor, or apply and autocorrect. And you can publish and assign this custom policy kind of at any scope that you're comfortable with, like resource group, subscription group, um, and then it recently become GA to uh, assign this at a management group level as well. So we're really excited about kind of improving this overall PowerShell experience and uh, looking forward to getting some more feedback uh, at EU. I think next slide, Julia. Awesome, thank you, Jody. Okay, so now going into what's new in machine config. Um, we're excited to have additional built-in content. Um, the new Azure Windows Server Security Benchmark is now 100% compliant with the CIS Compute 2019 benchmark. Um, and this new benchmark includes cloud-specific security controls and removes non-applicable controls that have no significant risk impact in our cloud environment. And all you have to do is apply through machine config. Also, you can set and maintain secure protocols through configuring client and server to TLS 1.2, as well as disable local user authentication. We've also expanded our distro support. Not going to read those, but um, oops, <laughs> uh, those are some of the new Linux distros we support. Um, and finally, we have expanded PowerShell support to full support for Windows PowerShell modules and DSC resources, including Windows Feature. And um, you can now leverage additional parameter types in custom DSC resources. So no longer just strings, but also now you have integers, booleans, doubles, and arrays. Cool. Hey, yeah, I think you have a question. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I have a quick question. Yeah. Uh, can you go back one slide? Um, just yeah. a question. So when you say you support the Windows PowerShell module, is it using implicit remoting? So, um, yeah, at yeah, short, I think it is. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. OK, um, cool. And so now jumping into NX Tools, we're super excited to announce that NX Tools is now open source. Shout out to our awesome author, Gail. Um, and the big goal here was mainly to just give the DSC community the tooling to develop on Linux more easily for machine config. And um, this module is intending to, to provide guidelines and samples to help authors create their own configs. So in a nutshell, NX Tools is an open source collection of class-based DSC resources for commonly used Linux modules and built-in machine config packages. It can help you manage common tasks like user and group management, file system operations, service management, archive operations, and package management. Um, Jody will help drop the link to the repo and the PS gallery in the chat where you can try it out. And some more commands um, for DSC resources that NX Tools has. Um, it provides PowerShell wrappers around well-known commands. NX group is the one we'll be using in the demo today. Um, we'll use it to audit if specified local group is present on a local machine. We'll be going through the process to set this up. Um, some other commands we have, NX file to manage a file or folder to make sure it's present or absent, NX user to manage an NX local user account, NX package, NX file line, and NX file content replace. We also just wanted to call out that this is the first open source repo we'll be releasing on our team, and we want to encourage y'all to create any issues, fork the project, and make any required changes. Um, really quickly before the demo, just wanted to um, jump into some community guidelines. There is currently a known issue where you can't use multiple different kinds of class-based resources in the same MOF file, but we're actively working with the PowerShell team to fix this. And um, as I mentioned, NX Tools is intending to provide guidelines and samples, so we're currently not accepting PRs. Um, support will be best effort via GitHub issues. 
And quick reminder, just we all know this, but uh, we're following the Microsoft Open Source Code of Conduct, so please respect others' opinions and experiences and let us know when people are displaying unacceptable behavior. And thanks for your commitment toward creating a welcoming environment. I think we have a couple questions from Gail and then Mikey. I just okay. wanted to let Mikey talk anyway. So here you go, Mikey, uh, just on the on the reasons. <laughs> go for it. Um, I was going to say, well, I, I was going to ask uh, first what um, different kinds of class based DSC resources means in this uh, instance. Um, Jody, could you take that one? Yeah, is that just a, so the limitation right now is that you can't use more than one class based resource within the same configuration. Okay, just so just any two types. class based DSC yeah, resources. Yeah, just not okay. multiple. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we're tracking that via an issue that we've already opened. Um, yeah. And yeah, we'll we'll be updating within the within the repo, but yeah, we're working on fixing that now. Yes, and there's another issue, which is what you documented about the reasons. When you have uh, so that's a general thing for the for the DSC community, which is well documented by Mikey, and I just wanted Mikey to just uh, remind everyone yep. about the reasons class. Yep. Um, so, and it's it's not just reasons, but if you're defining uh, types, either classes or enums that you're going to use for your DSC resources, um, best practice is to prefix the name of that enum or class with your module name, because you can get conflicts. So if uh, module A defines reasons um, as a type uh, and uses it for DSC resources, and so does module B. Uh, you'll get conflicts that'll blow up when you're doing um, uh, configuration compilation. So you don't see a problem when you're just doing invoke DSC resource, but when you're doing um, configuration compilation, you'll get errors. So I'm actually, I filed an issue today to update the docs because we mention it for reasons, but we don't mention it sort of as a global best practice. So that's on the to-do list as well. Okay, that's a good call out. Thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, it applies to ensure just as much as it applies to uh, reasons if you're using an enum for ensure. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, so now we're gonna hop into a demo using NX tools um, to create a custom machine config policy definition that audits whether we have an NX local group on our local system. Um, wanted to note that both get and set are implemented in the NX local group DSC resource, so both auditing and configuring are possible. But for the demo, we will be demonstrating audit only. Also just wanted to say this environment was created using Azure Jumpstart Arc Box by the incredible Jan, who I think is also in this call. Um, and if you're not familiar with ArcBox, it's a sandbox environment that allows the user to explore all the major capabilities of Azure Arc. And for people who don't know what that is, it's Microsoft's recommended solution to onboard on-prem and multi-cloud servers to Azure, so you can interact with them like you would with Azure VMs. And um, if you want to follow along with the scenario that I'll be showing here, uh, we'll be adding this Linux machine config scenario and the Windows custom scenario into Jumpstart in the next few weeks. Other um, auto-managed scenarios are coming soon there too, so stay tuned. Cool. Um, oh no. Okay. Um, so first, we hopefully you can see my VS code now, but um, we're going to be ensuring that you're in the right context and subscription and you set AZ context to switch if not. It's going to run F8 here. And you can see in the terminal, this is the subscription that I wanted to be in. Um, you'll need to install the latest version of our machine config module and the NX tools module, which I've already done, so not going to run these two. Um, here you can get the version of our commands and all of our current functions for machine config. So like get guest config package compliance status, new guest config package, new guest config policy, and then protect package and start guest config package remediation. You can also get the list of the available 
NX tools commands here, and we'll share the script with you later so you can look through these more on your own as well, as well as um, getting the DSC resources available. And you can see here that they're all class-based. And then now we're going to be creating a package based on a MOF file and DSC resources using the new guest config package commandlet. Um, the configuration is the compiled DSC configuration document full path. I'll run that now. Awesome. And you can see that that is ready. And um, this next few lines, we aren't going to be doing that since we're on CorpNet Windows computers. Um, but I'll just talk through it. After you create the package, you're going to go ahead and use the get guest configuration package compliance status command to test the package structure locally before you deploy at scale. And then after you test the package for set policies, use the start guest config package remediation command. And then you can use guest, get guest config package compliance status to verify the remediation is successful. Right, so now we'll be publishing our content to blob storage so that we can apply the policy at scale. I'll start by setting the resource group name as well as the storage account name. And then um, the step will take the longest to run. It um, is creating a storage account to upload your content package to. Uh, while this one's running, I'll just talk through the next two steps. So we're setting the key here, and this is the storage account key. And we're trying to get the first value in the response because the rest is metadata that we don't need. Um, and we're also going to be setting context, which is the metadata used to upload content to the storage account. It's basically like a larger key. Awesome. So we have our blob here. And now I will be setting the key and context. Cool. And now um, we can upload our content package to AZ Blob Storage, basically uploading a zip file into a container. And um, I will run this one now. And now we'll be uploading using content URI, which is a link to the location in the blob storage, plus a custom SAS token that specifies your permissions. As you can see here, um, we're on read permission by the R, and that's the minimum permission needed. So that. And now we'll be creating our policy artifacts. Keep in mind that you can deploy through other avenues too, like ARM, BICEP, or Terraform, um, not just policy, but we'll use policy for the demo. And here we'll set our unique identifier for policy, so the GUID and um, the policy name. Cool. And now we're going to create the policy JSON definition from a custom policy package. This is an offline command. And you'll be able to see it under um, the policies folder in the file explorer. For this demo, um, we're just setting the mode here to audit only. Okay, um, that part's done. And now uh, the final step we're gonna do in CLI today is create a policy definition. Um, this publishes the policy to the scope of your subscription. Awesome. So um, this next part we can do in portal or CLI, but I'm going to go to the portal for the demo. So I'll switch over there now. Cool. Um, yeah. Awesome, so now I'm going to, um, okay, this is the portal home screen for people who aren't as familiar with Azure. And then um, we're going to navigate to policy as a service here. And then we're going under definitions to see the policy definition we just created.
Oh, I know this part would take a long time, so I wrote down a joke. That isn't very, oh, never mind. You don't get to hear the joke. Um, okay, What's so. What's the joke? <laughs> <laughs> I, I asked ChatGPT for some PowerShell related jokes. They were all really bad. So instead, I have, why did the girl fall down the well? Because she couldn't see that well. Anyway. <laughs> Cool. Um, all right, so now we're going to find the definition that we just made. DSC call policy three. Cool. We're going to click into that and we're going to assign the policy and navigate it to, to the scope that we're looking for with the ellipses. Um, so Julia RG, select that. And then um, I'm just going to use all the basic settings here and then click review and create. So um, within 30 minutes, you should see your new guest assignment pop up in the guest assignments page. Um, since here it says creating the policy assignment succeeded. Um, but for the sake of time, we're just going to show one that we already had before. Um, this is the ArcBox Linux assignment on um, one of Jody's test VMs. Um, because this is an audit policy, it'll show you compliance um, status of the machine and any reasons for non-compliance. So it won't remediate for us. And this here is expected result because it's a newly provisioned marketplace image and um, an NX local group with the name ARC users was not found here. And so I'll get the steps for manual remediation. Um, but we just do want to note too that this specific um, NX local group resource group does have set, set implemented. So this can be toggled by specifying an auditing mode through the new machine config package and um, new machine config policy commandlets. Awesome. So now I'll head back to the slides and hand it off to Brandon to go over DSC v3. Thanks, Julia. Love the joke. <laughs> it's better than the one I suggested for sure. <laughs> uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm excited to be here talking about DSC with all of you. Um, DSC has been around since about 2006, I think, which is 16 years ago, believe it or not. I feel old. Um, the basic usage of DSC has largely remained unchanged, um, but the stars have recently aligned uh, to allow us to start reinvesting and reimagining DSC from the ground up. Um, I'm very happy to be able to talk with you a bit about the direction we're heading. Uh, next slide. We want to modernize DSC and make it simple and easy to use. Um, from resource authoring to writing and testing configurations, all the way through to rolling out at scale. We've been thinking hard about how to deliver on this simplicity, and we want to share with you where we are and hopefully get some feedback. Uh, next slide. So first, we want to make it easier to author resources. Even though we all love PowerShell, as everyone should, not everyone uses it. Um, they should still be able to create resources to do whatever it is that they need. By using standard in and standard out to pass JSON data, you'll be able to write your own resources in whatever language you want, even bash if you so choose. Uh, of course, we still plan to support our existing PowerShell based resources as well. Uh, next slide. We also want to make it easier to author configurations. Uh, JSON and YAML are pervasive in the industry today. Uh, nobody really likes MOF. Uh, most people don't like having to compile their configuration after writing it either. So why not write it directly in YAML or JSON and have DSC natively understand it? So that's what we're going to do. But what about the schema? Um, let's reuse what's already out there. Azure users already author configurations in JSON for their Azure resources using ARM templates. We want to make it easy for people to get started with this new config format. So we're going to reuse the existing ARM template schema for DSC. You can take everything you already know about Azure and reuse that knowledge for your configuration management with Azure. Uh, can you go back one sec? Uh, back again. 
So if any of you are actually Azure users today and you've used ARM templates before, um, this JSON example on the right here should look pretty familiar to you. Um, it's got the same sections that you would normally see in an ARM template like resources. Uh, you got names and types of your resources and the properties that they, you know, you want to pass to them. Uh, okay, next slide. Um, so we're making it easy to author resources and we're making it easy to author configurations. But what about testing and execution? We're going native with DSC. Uh, PowerShell is not required unless you want to use PowerShell based resources. A native command line interface will make it easy to use DSC on any platform and be incorporated into other tools and workflows as well. You'll be able to directly call individual resources similar to how you can use invoke DSC resources today in PowerShell. But we're also giving you the ability to invoke your configurations from the command line as well. Uh, no more assigning to localhost and waiting for this LCM to run it. Just type DSC config test or DSC config set. Next slide. Um, we don't usually use DSC to manage just one or two machines. We need our configurations to be rolled out across tens, hundreds, or thousands of machines. So Azure Auto Manage Machine Configuration will also support the new version of DSC. You'll be able to roll out your configs at Azure scale. And because DSC configs and ARM templates use the same schema, it'll be easy to incorporate your DSC resource, your DSC configurations right inside your ARM templates. And with Arc for Servers, you can use DSC at scale on-prem as well as in other clouds. So if you look at this right here, this is an ARM template for a guest configuration assignment. But if you see inside there, there's that configuration section. It looks like another ARM template, like a nested ARM template that you might have used, but that's actually your configuration just nested inside your ARM template as well. All right, next slide. And now world famous, awesome, amazing Steve Lee uh -huh. has already started implementing the proof of concept for this. I'm going to pass it over to him for everyone's favorite part, live demos. All right, thanks, Brandon. All right, uh, so first let me just first say, this is definitely a work in progress. Oh, actually, uh, Mikey, do you have a question before we get to the demo? Or was that an, oh, you hit the wrong button. <laughs> all right, it's all good. Uh, anyways, uh, this is a work in progress. Um, I think the immediate question people may want to ask is, like, when, when do they get their hands on it? I, I'm tentatively targeting maybe a public preview in June, all right? Um, but I can show you what we have today, and this will eventually be open source, and it does work cross-platform, but I'm showing it on Windows today. Uh, so let me just first start with a resource. Um, and you can kind of see some JSON here, uh, and if you recognize or kind of read this, this is uh, should be obvious as a registry resource. So if I were to call the, um, so the resource that I'm going to show is actually, I'm going to call the resource directly. Um, this is actually an executable that's written in Rust. Um, and I don't know whether or not we'll actually end up shipping this thing or not. Um, but you can kind of see this is going to return JSON. So it takes in JSON and outputs JSON. And that's generally going to be the contract for a resource uh, with the exception of PowerShell. Um, all the resource types, if you write it, presumably in Python node or whatever, that the contract will be going to get JSON, you're going to output JSON. And then you also have to find a schema so we can validate that the uh, inputs are correct. Now. I can take you now a more complex example. Um, let me just go. So this is actually the repo, and eventually this will be public. <laughs> it's not public yet. So let me just go to my examples. Uh, I'll go to this one. Um, so again, uh, we're, we're right now we're only supporting kind of like a subset of what's available in the um, ARM template syntax. Syntax. Um, and so actually, I'm, I can do it this way. Whoops, wrong button. So let me just get. Get content. Uh, this is the one I want. And basically, there is this other resource in the repo called OS Info. And again, this is also happens to be written in Rust. Um, and the reason we're writing in Rust is that we can run this um, in environments where PowerShell itself may not be able to run for various reasons. Um, but this is going to do a simple get. Um, you kind of see here, this is so this is representation of a very simple configuration because it's only called one resource. But I'm going to now call this to do a get. And one of the things you will notice is that if you call the resource directly, the, the contract is just um, JSON. But the DSC command itself can actually accept 
YAML, and by default, if it knows that you're uh, just outputting it to the console, it's actually going to format it as a syntax colored YAML. It just makes it much easier as a human like myself to read it versus seeing a whole bunch of uh, braces and quotes and stuff like that. Uh, but if you were to, for example, uh, pipe this to more, uh, you'll see that uh, what is actually piping out is actually JSON. All right, so if we go to a little bit more complex example, uh, YAML here, this is going to use the two resources I just showed, the registry resource and the OS resource. So the first one is really, oh, by the way, I'll just say that only get right now is actually uh, implemented for a configuration. Uh, there's some other work I have to do before we get to set and test. But um, uh, this is going to just get the OS info. It's going to get um, two pieces of registry. One is a proc name, one is a, the system root. So if I were to get content on this one, and this is called OS registry OS info. Registry. And in this case, I'm going to use the YAML just to prove that it works. Ignore this other stuff that it's showing. Um, I'll get to that in a bit. Um, so here I'm going to pass this, and right now it can do um, basic orchestration, meaning that uh, depends on is not supported right. It uh, will be supported, but it's not supported right now. I mean, you see, um, it did it. Uh, it sent the results. Uh, in this case, there are no errors. Like if I show a negative case, it can show you what the experience looks like. I can get this invalid one. Uh, and an invalid schema, if I were to just show it real quick up here. It's a simple test case. It's just a basically some uh, explicit typos, right? So like key path here is missing an E. Uh, value name has an extra D on the end. So in this case, it's just leveraging um, JSON schema validation. Uh, let's see. So here it's going to say uh, messages. Um, this is kind of like the equivalent of reasons. Um, this, is like, this is something that Mikey fought for. Um, and basically here we're providing, each resource will have an opportunity to provide uh, messages of um, and this is coming directly from the JSON schema validation, but tells you like these things are not valid uh, and that it had errors. Um, the other thing I just want to cover real quick, and, and this is not, uh, it's only partially <laughs> implemented, but uh, one of the newer concepts you're going to have is these things called groups or resource groups. Uh, and one of the ones that uh, will be supported, whether or not you choose to use it, is this thing called assertions. Uh, basically, this is an assertion group, which itself is a resource, and it, the way it's implemented, it's actually going to be uh, the DC executable itself will implement this resource. And basically, you can provide a list of uh, resources that you want to have as assertions. So assertions basically, uh, think of it as if you're familiar with group policy, it would be like the old group policy filter, right? So, and this may not be best practice, but you may want to deploy this configuration across a number of machines, but you only want to apply if uh, it applies to that machine. So you use assertions as a way to filter those. So if any test in the assertion fails, then the rest of the configuration would not apply because you would have um, a dependency on the assertion before you actually do. So whether or not you're doing a get set and, and test is kind of uh, not no up, but it's basically going to perform a test operation against all the listed resources. Again, this is not currently um, fully implemented yet, so work in progress. This, this will actually fail right now, so it's not going to work. Um, I'm trying to think, was there anything else I wanted to cover real quick? Uh, well, I'll just say like um, along with assertions, there's also a, um, an idea to have a pair. Oops, that's not what I want to show. I want to show this one. A parallel group, so all the resources uh, in a parallel group will run concurrently. Uh, it is really up to the user to know that these are safe to run concurrently. Um, so you got to do your validation. And then there's also a, uh, I don't have a, oh, actually, I actually do have an example here. There's also going to be a generic grouping mechanism. Uh, again, these are all just resources themselves. So that means that you could actually have a group of resources run concurrently, meaning that each resource is, is run serially, but the group itself runs concurrently with different groups. Um, and of course, all these can be uh, wrapped up in an assertion group as well, if that's what you need. Uh, trying to see anything else. Uh, I think the only other thing maybe worth showing is a, a resource test case to see what the output would look like. So I think the way I would do that as I have to go to registry. My README has an example. I don't I tend to not remember these things. Okay, so I'll just run this one. Oops. All right, so this is just going to test that that path exists. And again, because I'm calling it the, the resource directly, you're not going to see the fancy YAML output. But you can see here that uh, in this case it does exist, so it tells you it is in desired state. Uh, and in this case, 
if I were to do this. This is saying um, no, it's not in uh, it's not in the current desired state because this key actually exists and is not absent. Um, so basically, it's returning the current um, state. And uh, when you, if you were to run through DSC config, then it will actually have both the before and after as the idea, right? So that higher level agents or tooling doesn't have to go through this stuff uh, to figure it out itself. Uh, I think that's probably the extent of what I had ready for demo at this point. Uh, I see there's a, some comments in here. Cross machine. Um, I think that it may be interesting to have a remote root resource, maybe in those cases, if I have to think about that. I, again, a lot of these things, the idea is that because we're simplifying the way to implement these resources, uh, hopefully the community will be able to implement some of these things. But but it's worth saying that it's done at the resource level, not at yes. the tool, not at the DSC tool level. That's right. Right, right now, the idea the conceptually is that we're simplifying this layer and a lot of the, I wouldn't say a lot of the heavy lifting, but some of the heavy lifting will be done within resources because I think uh, that could be that could introduce some interesting scenarios because you can layer these resources and do things that the original author may not have uh, planned for, but hopefully it will work. And there was a, there was another question, which is, uh, can you uh, can you have multi state so um, being able to support different states? So you do you are in one state, let's say to before you install your um, domain controller, and then you move to another state after you've done some of the changes to your domain controller. Is this more like a time about reboots or? I think it's just different state, and and I would if I can take this one, I believe sure. it's just. It's not going to be done at this tool level. It's uh, this is orchestration where you have one state, then you go to another state. It's just a yes. different configuration that you need to apply. So it's a higher level of orchestration, not yes. this specific tool. I agree. That is what uh, I would also recommend. Um, you you want to have it completely uh, kind of almost atomic, right? In a sense where you complete that, and then if you know that you're in that good state, uh, you can run the next config, and the next config could have an assertion that to validate that the state is correct. Uh, yeah, answering Ryan, it took us a while uh, to get here, but we're we're definitely making progress. Yeah, I think we can probably start clearly saying DSC is not dead. Yes. Um, I have another request. Um, can you explain? Because um, I have people asking the question several times, so because it's recorded right now, it would be great that you explain the difference between DSC v3 and the PSDSCs and the relationship oh. between them as well. So, so when I say PSDSC, you mean specifically the PS Desire State Configuration Module? OK, so uh, DSC v3, the way I, I think people should think about it is DSC itself is just a higher level platform, and the PowerShell part of it going forward is one aspect, right? Where de as, as mentioned, we definitely want to support existing uh, PowerShell script-based and class-based resources. Um, and the way we're going to support those is that uh, the DSC engine or executable uh, is going to end up calling into a PowerShell desire state configuration module to actually do the get and invocations, right? So none of that itself will change. Um, so if you're living in the PowerShell only world, then the only difference for you really is instead of MOF, you learn JSON or we'll also eventually have tooling hopefully to make this easier um, so that you're not literally writing YAML or JSON by hand, but you'll have tooling to have IntelliSense and all that good stuff. Um, but fundamentally, PS Desire State Configuration Module handles the PowerShell side, and then DCXE handles everything, or is a higher level layer that handles everything else. So hopefully that makes sense. So, so let's highlight that when people talk about PSDSC and DSC now, it's not the same thing at all. Just to make in sure that like everyone's yeah, so, on the so same the, page. Yes. Yeah, so, so that question in the past, people could say DSC or PSDSC and mean the same thing. But going forward, uh, they do have different meanings. And DSC will rely on PSDSC for the purpose of PowerShell. Yes. And it's also good to remind that when we talked about DSC in the old style, it's so uh, PowerShell 5, like people were meaning DSC, the pool server, the compilation DSL, 
and yes, all yes. of those things. So now we talk DSCV3. We only talk about this uh, utility that you run to apply the configuration, which leverage then the PSDSC module, if you want to, and other types of resources defined with the JSON schema. I, I think uh, technically, yes, but I think in general, I, I think we should use the word D. So maybe this is a feedback that maybe we shouldn't call the execute DSC. I don't know. So, so there's DSC XE and there's DSC as a concept, right? So DSC is a platform. So DSC as a platform will encompass other tooling, as I mentioned, beyond just DSC executable itself over time, right? So DSC as in desired state configuration is really a platform and DSC XE is one part of it. PSDSC is another part of it. Um, we'll hopefully have like a VS Code extension for authoring and maybe other tooling in the future as well as needed, right? And that would be under the, it's kind of like, PowerShell uh, is kind of distinct from PWSH in a sense, uh, but also from modules and stuff, right? So it's kind of like that you should think of it as a higher level thing. Uh, I, I understand that there's some confusion because DC v1.1, DC v2, and now DC v3 have some, if you draw like a Venn diagram, there's some overlap, but there's also differences between these things like LCM pull push and all this stuff. So you should draw that diagram, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll do that for my presentation at PowerShell Summit. Perfect. You see, I, I like it, the. It may um, include your face, by the way, if I draw that diagram. So just, just give you a warning. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know I've been annoying you a lot with those because there's <laughs> so many confusion in the community, and we've been battling these kind of confusions now for years. And with uh, Michael Green, we did some like a talk just about those, and then explaining where things were going, and and people still don't get it. So I mean, we need to be very careful about the namings of stuff. 100% agree. And one of the big changes here that also came in mind is that the idea is that this reach or that this has an opportunity to reach customers beyond PowerShell, right? And, and that will benefit PowerShell only users because if you can get more resources written in other languages, then you can still call those from PowerShell. Like that, the idea is like you would call DSCX. Uh, if you prefer to write in PowerShell, by all means, write in PowerShell. But now you may have other resources for Linux, for Windows, for XYZ um, that you can leverage that someone else. Is more quickly to write because they're for more familiar with Go or Python, or the case may be, right? But I, I, the message about confusion, 100%, I got it. Uh, maybe we just need a bunch of new, new cool T-shirts. Uh, we need like a sad Gale meme <laughs> going. <laughs> no, <laughs> gonna, I'm going to retire sad Joey. I'm going to introduce sad Gale. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, fine. Maybe I won't do that. Um. I, I had another question. So there's one for Jody, I believe, which is about, can you comment on the current best practices for using and storing uh, credentials in Azure to manage? Yeah, so right now we don't recommend storing credentials um, in, in custom packages, but you know this is something that is like obviously on our roadmap. And I think that like as we kind of work to hopefully leverage DSC v3, this is kind of one of the pain points that we can um, look to hopefully uh, hopefully helping with, but right now we don't recommend storing them. Let, let me just say on that, like uh, handling secrets in configuration is one of the uh, important aspects of the new model that we'll have to figure out a good solution for, whether it is DIY or via machine config or whatever you're using. You should never have hard-coded secrets inside the config itself. I'll put it that way. <laughs> yes. The recommended solution is that it is not recommended. <laughs> no, but it's yeah. I guess. I guess some of the some of the ways would be to implement it directly at the resource level. But it's, I don't uh, like that. I don't like it at the. It, it means that you have to know it per resource, right? Yeah, yeah that's I the mean, problem. Uh, what I would say is, you know, let. We're, we're kind of following the model of ARM templates here, right? Um, and if we kind of look and see how ARM templates handle secrets, um, that can kind of give us a, a good a good suggestion on the path forward here. Um, so, you know, we have things like parameters uh, that can be passed into a configuration. Um, that's probably a route that we can look at for handling secrets as well. Cool. When? <laughs> yesterday, <know>. right? Yeah. <laughs> always, always. Come on, Steve. Yesterday. <laughs> I, I sometimes I need sleep. 
<laughs> and keep in mind that I do I do have other projects besides DC that I have to manage as well. But you've been very active, so I'm uh, yes, I, I'm trying to at least get it enough momentum that we can uh, get it in people's hands. I'll put it that way. Uh, to answer Daniel, uh, I, I think a secrets management type of solution, uh, which may not be required, but is maybe a best practice, is something. Obviously, I'm I have an affinity towards that because that's what we do for PowerShell. It wouldn't literally be secrets management, but you could something something like that maybe. Um, I wanted to highlight there's another thing which probably you get from the previous session, which was uh, with uh, Demetrius and uh, I believe Ryan. So the good thing as well with uh, the DSC tooling, being able to target different type of language so you can create your resources in any language means that product teams, any product teams, they can they don't have to write PowerShell, which we know is uh, not necessarily what they like to do and, and they're not necessarily good at it either. But uh, at least they can, they have the SDK, they have the configuration, they just can create uh, whatever resource they want in the language they want, which makes sense for the product they're configuring and they can deliver that. So I think that's also uh, bringing them closer to this type of DSC ecosystem, which I think Absolutely. is great. Yeah. So I think the comments coming are specifically for for uh, um, machine config. Well, thank you very much for all of that. There's five minutes left. If you've got some more questions or some more comment, or if Jason, you just want to come and say hi, because I haven't seen that you were just look lurking. <laughs> I'm just checking there's no other question up there. No. All right. Hey. <laughs> so so that was great, great content. Um, so you said uh, maybe the next time to touch base with you would be around June kind of time. So uh, uh, maybe no, no. I think I think we may let's let's see how progress goes. I think the only thing I mentioned about June is having. Uh, I'm I'm thinking that's a target. I'm not not a commitment that maybe by that time we'll have uh, enough of the features enabled that people can actually um, start using it uh, in test scenarios, not in production. And at that point, maybe we would also have the repo open at that point. So, yeah, my my point was we probably try to get you guys back in around like oh, after June. June. <laughs> so no, no, because I definitely won't be there, <laughs> and probably not the month after, but uh, some other people will. So probably around after after this after June, so around July or in summer, let's say, I uh, probably will try to you know oh, see see fall. where you're at. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can definitely do. Uh, I think as we make progress, I'm more than happy to uh, join the call more more consistently or frequently to kind of provide updates. Uh, we'll have to see as it goes. Sweet. And so directly, just just uh, so directly, you're directly working with the machine configuration team. So then you're really working in parallel. So yes. the features that you will be able to do really match the the use case of machine config. Uh, I'll put it this way, yes. And uh, since Demetrius has already made, you know, the Winget configure stuff public, like we are working closely with them. They're not on DCV3 right now; they're still using the V2 stuff. But uh, eventually, um, right now, those are my two primary partners that we're targeting this platform for. Uh, and hopefully, that over time uh, we'll get more partners. But right now, we're not staffed to actually handle. If we actually had more partners interested, I think that would be we spend too much time talking to them than actually writing code. So, <laughs> or yesterday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Brandon. And thank you, Steve. Um, the next community call is on the 17th of May. We don't have anything planned, so probably it's just going to be discussions. And otherwise, if you have something that you would like to present, or and that's for every one of you in this call, and even if you're watching the recording, feel free to contact us. We are again in aka.ms forward slash ps slack or aka.ms forward slash ps discord, and we're on the DSC channel. Thank you very much. And Daniel, you can stop the recording.